buenas dias mis amigos alright today I'm gonna pick on Afshin Yatin if I'm saying his name correctly and I love this guy I sub to his channel uh, but when it comes to end time eschatology like everybody else it seems like he's got it wrong and I'm gonna show I'm gonna nitpick is what I'm gonna do so let's listen to what he has to say first revelation is a revelation it's a revealing where it's not supposed to be a mystery or hidden God wrote the book of revelation for us to understand and to know when these things shall be so all we have to do we we have the rapture there in verse 31 of Matthew 24 so all we have to do is go back now and go backwards and see what happens before the rapture okay um, and that that'll tell us the sequence of events so going back to Matthew 24 and I encourage you to open up your Bibles and, and read along with me and we see that you know he tells they ask him in verse 3 when will these things come to pass and in verse 4 of Matthew 24 and Jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet so first we're going to have wars and rumors of wars which we do hear about right now um, and then we're going to have in verse 7 for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places all these are the beginning of sorrows now notice in the second seal of revelation 6 that we covered what was the second seal it was war it was the red horse riding in bringing war after the first seal when the antichrist comes on the scene so the Just repeat what he said here. It was war. It's the red horse riding in, bringing war after the first seal when the Antichrist comes on. Ouch. Goodness sakes, I, it, I cringe when I hear people say that. Alright, so. People that have utter hatred for our Lord Jesus teach this doctrine that Jesus is the Antichrist. And it's pure, you know, it's crazy. It is. It's crazy. So let's go here. Um, Righteousness, he does judge and make war. All right, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. We are those on the white horses who follow Jesus, who is on the white horse. So we go to Revelation six, and the Lamb, which is Jesus, opens. He's the only one worthy to open the seals, and the very first seal he opens is the white horse <laughs> Jesus you gotta remember Jesus is from everlasting okay and to everlasting so him that he that sat on him on the white horse had a bow that's Jesus and the bow is the Word of God so, and let's, let's 
do it this way here. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Jesus is the one who has the bow, which is the word of God proceeding out of his mouth, which is the sharp two-edged sword and a crown because he is the king of kings was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer he is the one that overcomes the world it's not the antichrist all right i mean the idea that this is the antichrist it it's you know i don't think people are putting any thought into what's being written here and the significance of it and they're just they're getting it from other people I already know they're getting it from people that teach falsely and who present this idea that Jesus is the Antichrist and it's an absolute hatred for our Lord Jesus Christ and ultimately for us as well now the, the second seal is the red horse okay that's that's not Jesus all right that's the absence of Jesus the absence of purity this is purity and then this is the counter to purity all right okay so um, now we're gonna keep listening because we're gonna we're, we're gonna hear something else that is uh, astonishing really on the scene so the order is is the same here in matthew 24 jesus says you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars and then in verse 7 for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom all right okay so let me just first point out that the wars that's not the sign of the end times at all so let's go over this here in Matthew 24. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. This is not a sign of the end time at all. I'll show you here in a second. Um, and, and here in Mark 13. Let's go. Where's this? Talk about wars here somewhere. Uh, there it is it talks about these are the beginnings of sorrows right you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars but the end shall not be yet again the wars have nothing to do with the end of the world it's just things that will it's just the beginning of sorrows I think is the best way to describe it it's not uh, a sign or a any it doesn't have any you know monumental uh, significance at all all right and then in Luke 21 uh, you shall hear of wars and commotions be not terrified for these things must first come to pass but the end is not by and by the wars and the rumors of wars this has been going on since way back way way back long long time ago and the they're going to continue and there's no significance whatsoever don't let these wars trouble you do not be par uh, terrified all right these are the beginnings of sorrows this is not the end the end shall not be yet okay so that's that's important to understand okay so because in revelation 6 when it talks about the red horse, for example, um, the power was given unto the him, the red horse, to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. All right, and then the third seal is about the balances, and the fourth seal is about uh, killing. Um, people on the earth okay I don't want to get into that because 
I'll do that some other time. I, you know, as far as breaking it down, um, Ashton, he, he, he's correct when he says the first five seals have been opened and the sixth seal is parallel to what we read in Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31. Okay, so on the sixth seal, there's an earthquake. Here, let's go back here. And the sixth seal is, um, uh oh, where's it at here? There's a great earthquake, and the sun became black as saff cloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. That's a parallel with what we read in verse 29. And immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken it's great when i see somebody make that connection when they're able to connect the dots um, you know because that's if you do that all throughout the bible it's amazing how simple the bible is it really is and here's another place where people a lot of people don't make uh, the connection and they should because it's real simple in revelation 20 verse 11 and I saw a great white throne, and him that sat upon it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Okay, so this is parallel to what we read in Revelation 6, um, where the, you know, the um, six seals open, right? The sun became black, right? and then Matthew 24. And this, <clears throat> excuse me, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not, shall not give her light. Okay, so this is all parallel. All right. Kingdom against kingdom. That's a world war. At this point in Matthew 24, we are in uh, that that second seal. You know, once once we see world war uh, in today's age, that'll be it. That'll be the sign that there's no question. No, that's not the sign. Okay, so let me go back. And show you what the sign is and of course Jesus is asked specifically what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world <clears throat> and the sign he he just comes right out and says it and Jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you that's the sign for many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many and this is prevalent all throughout i mean look first of all let's establish the fact that the wars have nothing to do with the progressing to the end time or the sign of the end time it's deception and because of deception there are fewer and fewer people being saved and because there are fewer and fewer people being saved, there's going to ultimately come to a point where there is nobody saved. It's not because of wars. It's because of deception. And this is... I mean, this stands out like a sore thumb. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. All right... <laughs> And then we go we'll go down to verse 24 here. <clears throat> and there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall gr show great signs and wonders. In so much that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. He tells us plainly that the deception of this world is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and, and really it's not a new thing at all evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived all right so <clears throat> excuse me okay so we see this is pretty obvious in Matthew 24 mark 13 and not as obvious in Luke 21, but if you can um, understand here, let me first of all, in Mark 13, um, <clears throat> again, he's asked, what shall be the sign of thy coming and, and, and 
Uh, when shall all these things be fulfilled? And the very first thing is, Jesus says, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. All right. So this is the mark or the key of the end time. Okay, see, so you, you shall be hated of all men. Why? Because they are deceived. Right? And the beginning, okay, or I'm sorry, though, those days shall be the affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. Alright, and so this is, again, um, an indication that things are going to get worse and worse, not because of wars increasing they won't increase they'll continue it's because of the deception that is in the world today and it's only getting worse and worse and worse and it would reach a point if god let it played out as such that there would come a time when nobody was saved and except the lord had shortened those days no flesh should be saved not because of wars but because of deception all right again here in mark 13 a warning us of false christ false prophets showing signs and wonders to seduce if it were possible even the elect evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived so it's progressively growing to a point to where if god let it play out all the way through there would be no people saved because of the deception all right that's clear crystal clear in Luke 21 of course it same thing all right when shall all these things come to pass and the very first thing he says is take heed that ye be not deceived all right now I don't want to get in too much into this but um, Luke goes a little more into the hatred in my opinion this is just my opinion the hatred for the saved all right and so it's but it's the same thing it, people hate us because they themselves are deceived and the deception of the world is growing and increasing all the way until the end all right now let's get back to, uh, well, let's see. Let's get back to him. Question that the tribulation period has begun. Okay, and then uh, Jesus says in verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. What does that mean? This is the beginning of the tribulation period, that seven-year tribulation. All right, again, I, I can't help you with the seven-year tribulation because it's not in the Bible anywhere at all. He doesn't get this from the Bible he gets this from other men who are teaching that Jesus is the Antichrist and he believes them and this is a an indication of a lack of faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands all right if you believe if you trusted the Bible and you knew that Bible is from God you would not be listening to what other men say you would be listening to what God says there is nothing in the Bible at all talks about a seven-year tribulation I can't help you with that I can't show you that it's not there I'd have to show you the entire Bible and show you nowhere at all it's nowhere at all and I mean really you're making it out as though Jesus is ignorant of the whole idea let's do it this way oh 11 times it's mentioned except when you go through it all it's not mentioned a single time not even once no year no seven year nothing it's not anywhere now you can look at this for yourself and i'm telling you it's not anywhere at all it's not even suggested you can't even point to anything you can't point to daniel you can't point to revelation you can't point to matthew 24 mark 13 luke 21 you can't point to anything that says a seven year period period 
This is strictly coming from false teachers and for crying out loud. Man, for crying out loud. What shall be this? You're teaching Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. You're teaching it and you're not even. It's unbelievable. You're not even reading what it says. You see it right here. Take heed that no man shall deceive him, but that no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name. What do you think that means? Many people claiming to be Christians are deceiving people. And then, of course, false prophets, false teachers, false Christ, showing signs and great wonders. If it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And as this is happening, <laughs> when you look at it at the Bible and actually see what it says man it does not say anything at all about a seven year tribulation and what it does is hides the fact that we are in the great tribulation right now but the deceiver doesn't want you to believe that the deceiver wants you to think oh everything's just hunky dory everything's fine no everything is not fine this is going to be the first three and a half years that first part there's no there's not even a three and a half year period uh, yeah, I know what he's talking about don't I don't want you to think I'm ignorant all right let's see here three and a half year no it's not anywhere at all I'm showing you that I want to prove to you it's not anywhere they're taking something else and trying to twist it in this uh, uh, <laughs> um, just hold on, just hold on. Part of it, we get that from Daniel, we'll cover that in other videos, but we see in verse 9 it says, then... Okay, well, he brought it up, so maybe I... It's going to be the first three and a half years, that first part of it, we get that from Daniel. We'll Alright, so let's look at it now, because he brought it up. Because I don't want I don't want you guys to be deceived. I want you to believe what the Bible says. So, do we have a three? First of all, wait a second. Let's go this way. Seventy years. Oh, that's close, but that's not seven years. Seventy weeks. Well, that's got the word seven and that part of it in seventy. It's kind of close. Oh, seven weeks. Yeah, but seven weeks is not even a year okay <laughs> let's see three score three score oh doggone it all right so it's not anywhere it's not in Daniel 9 and this is where uh, the liars or the, the deceivers um, same thing this is where they're getting the seven year tribulation but it doesn't say seven year tribulation and then they say well it's three and a half years and it doesn't say three and a half years yeah that's pure insanity okay and to top it off this 70 weeks has already been fulfilled and it was fulfilled when Jesus Christ laid down his life okay it's unbelievable so these people are saying Jesus Christ did not fulfill the end of sins he does not make an end of sins and then not they'll even go so far as to say that the Antichrist is the one that makes an end of sins it's pure insanity uh, it's the it's popular I get it it's the most popular teaching in the world today yeah, but I want to go back to Matthew 24 and what's it say when Jesus is asked of the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world it's deception people are deceiving false teachers lying deceiving evil men and seducers waxing worse and worse it's pure insanity the 70 weeks were fulfilled when Jesus Christ laid down his life it's it's an abomination to say that he didn't cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease all right he makes 
all of that desolate even until the consummation which is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven this is and we are lifted up in the air that's the consummation all right and then comes the wrath of God it's as clear as day and, and to the idea that this is well this hasn't been fulfilled yet you've got to be just willingly mind-numbingly ignorant and stupid I, there's no way to look at this and to teach this idea that this hasn't been fulfilled yet in a rational logical way there's no possible way it's it, it just drives me nuts man but again I gotta go back to Matthew 24 and realize this is exactly what Jesus said would happen let's see if I can find something significant Be behold <laughs> wow behold I have told you before and Jesus says this but take ye heed behold I have foretold you all things he tells us this is gonna happen and we see it happening and it's amazing that so many people are still so blind to it they're more blind to it than ever before it's it's a phenomenon really all right we'll cover that in other videos but we see in verse 9 it says then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake okay and they shall and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many so has the rapture occurred at this point okay what, what are we seeing we're seeing a world war has the rapture occurred at this point what are you talking about action and then we're seeing you know people betraying one another and we see martyred saints we see saints being killed and you know they'll deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you so the rapture hasn't occurred we're only on verse 9 remember the tribulation it says after the tribulation in verse 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days it comes out right and just says it and it's verse 31 where the rapture occurs in Matthew 24 so we're not there yet but Jesus is describing the persecution during the tribulation period when that world war uh, begins no, no no you got it wrong Afshin you got it wrong you got it wrong 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 yeah you got it right in the sense that immediately after the tribulation all right the tribulation is about the, the deception in the world for, let's go here in verse 21 for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened this is about the deception in the world okay and just as I, I pointed out before evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived let's see if I can find something here in Luke 18 it's a great question being asked I tell you wait let's go up here and God shall and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the Son of Man cometh shall he find faith on the earth shall he find faith on the earth that's an amazing question except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse 
this is the great tribulation the trials that we're going through is not a dodging bullets it's dodging lie after lie after lie it's being surrounded by deceivers it's turning on your television and seeing nothing but lies it's the Hollywood movies and the newspapers and the schools that you go to we're surrounded by liars and it's not just them it's those that stand behind the pulpit they're everywhere and except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved the deception in the world is worse than what people are teaching it's ten times worse than probably what I even understand and I like to think I, I can see it I can see all these liars everywhere and they're not deliberate liars they've been deceived and so all I can do is I can try to shut my best to show whoever has eyes to see but there ain't very many that has the faith to be able to see in particular what Matthew 24 is teaching it's about faith it's not about school all right it's not about you know being a being an expert you know it's not about being having an I, a high IQ it's not you know not about where you grew up where you went in life it's about faith it's always been about faith man Psalm 19 verse 7 the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple the simple is just a, a reference or, or a word meaning you know dummies like me dummies like me can be made wise by the testimony of the Lord and the law of the Lord okay now this is easy to understand but let me repeat it the law is there as our schoolmaster to bring us to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ all right so this is all very simple all right and so the Word of God makes even the biggest dummies like me wise not because I'm wise but because the Word of God is wise All right. and then it says in verse 11 and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many in verse 12 and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. Now, a lot of people have confusion about what that means, enduring to the end. Is it talking about saving faith? I think it's talking about being saved out of the tribulation, period. He who endures unto the end. Okay, so, and this is this is rather simple as well. All right. It's true that there are liars that teach every single verse of the Bible incorrectly. I, I don't doubt, I don't dispute that at all but what did we just read where was that at except except those days be shortened no flesh should be saved right there it is and except those days be shortened no flesh should be should be saved but he that endure into the end the same shall be saved there's now all this is saying is that not even though these deceptions are getting worse and worse and because of the deception the love of many is waxing this is a product of the deception of the world okay this is because uh, people are deceived this is the result of being deceived because there are so many people being deceived and that's only increasing the love of many shall wax cold all right it's as obvious as all can be but this uh, verse here where it says the same that they um, 
he that he that in that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved this is talking about even though there's all this deception in the world there's still the opportunity to be saved if you can endure all the deceptions all right then and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ if you you can still have faith you can still be saved if you have faith and overcome these things you think about what it says in first John uh, first excuse me uh, in first John chapter 5 isn't it for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is a victory that overcomes the world even our faith who is he that overcomes the world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God all right so uh, so because Jesus has overcome the world we overcome the world by having faith in him all right so I forget what I, where was I at here all right so again uh, all this means is there will be people getting saved all the way until the end of the world okay that's it as simply as it I can put it this is not about dodging bullets it's about dodging deception. And of the tribulation will be saved out of the tribulation because he'll be raptured. Okay, it's the people that live off the grid. They don't take the mark. and they. Now he just went off the deep end. Yeah, I don't know if it's all the marijuana smoking that's going on in the world. This, this is mind-boggling. Raptured. Okay, it's the people that live off the endures go. unto the end of the tribulation will be saved out of the tribulation because he'll be raptured. Okay, it's the people that live off the grid. They don't. I, I don't know what he's. How did he? I don't know how he made that transition, but take the mark and they simply survive uh, during that tribulation period. I, I, I'm just wow. What are you talking about, man? because he'll be raptured okay it's the people that live off the grid they don't I gotta go back. save What's going out on? of the tribulation even faith will have confusion about what that means enduring to the end is it talking about saving faith I think it's talking about being saved out of the tribulation period he who endures unto the end of the tribulation will be saved out of the tribulation because he'll be raptured Okay, it's the people that live off the grid, they don't take the mark, and they simply survive uh, during that tribulation. And that's insane. Okay, now, so you don't even have to believe. I, just don't take the mark of the beast. Just don't get a tattoo on your forehead. Or don't have a microchip implanted in your forehead, and thou shall have everlasting life. You don't even need Jesus. And what Jesus did doesn't even matter. Is that what you're teaching? Tribulation, because he'll be raptured. Okay, it's the people that live off the grid. They don't take... People that live off the grid. Nothing to do with believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the, getting the microchip in the hand or in the forehead. Don't forget that part. Got a big old chunk of metal hanging out of your head, but whatever take the mark and they simply survive uh, during and just simply live <laughs> if you're alive and you don't have a big chunk of metal hanging out of your head or whatever this teaching is then you get saved and be out of hell with Jesus you don't even have to believe that's the beauty of this teaching is that you don't have to believe in Jesus in fact if you read Daniel 9 it's the Antichrist that takes away sins and you read Revelation 6 it's it's the Antichrist who conquers who overcomes the world who conquers go he's going forth conquering and to conquer that's the I mean this stuff is insane and then oh, okay there's more there's something else I want to touch upon and let me just let me just paraphrase if you want to watch this you can all right so 
this teaching is insane. All right, it's not the Bible. It's people that hate the Lord Jesus Christ teach this stuff. And what he's going to talk about here uh, as we move forward is this idea that they're building a third temple. Wait, let's, I think he even shows a picture of the third temple. All right, let me just fast forward because I want to I want to end this. But I have to cover this last one last thing here. All right, so let's get go on here. It's, it's going to come up here. All right. All right, let's keep going. Uh-oh. Where's it at? Oh, I want to do skip over it. Oh, I can't find it. Well, it doesn't matter. It's there somewhere. Doggone it. There, he shows a picture. Of, there it is right there. Third, you know, newly constructed temple in Jerusalem. Okay, there it is. All right, and this is, this is pure insanity. I think, first of all, Let's do it this way. First of all, in in, <laughs> in John chapter 2, Jesus is talking about tearing down the temple, and then he's going to rebuild it. And the Jews are, oh, are you more when you're crazy? When I have 46 years, man, we it took us 46 doggone years to build this sucker. And you're going to destroy it and build it up in three days by yourself? Are you kidding me are you out of your cotton picking mine but Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body now we are all in this temple that Jesus was in God was manifest in the flesh God was in this temple that we are in right now all right so just to make sure that I'm going to shorten this point up, let's go to let's go to. I'm not sure where I'm going here. First uh, Corinthians three verse sixteen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Jesus was in that temple that we're in we are in that temple and what happened Jesus destroyed that temple didn't he Jesus destroyed the temple and then reared it up in three days and we that are his we will follow him see he's leading the way so he's destroyed this body that we're in and he's rebuilt this body that we're in into a more perfect or a, a perfect Bible a, a better body excuse me Jesus has torn down this body and rebuilt a perfect body so we follow him right he was in our body Does this make sense to anybody it's so simple I don't know how to explain it Jesus destroyed this body if you consider this body a temple and it is Jesus destroyed this body and then rebuilt it back up in three days. The Jews didn't get it. People today don't get it. But it's so simple. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. It's phenomenal. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own you and this goes back to Genesis 1 when God made us God made us in his image after his likeness we are in the temple of God but this temple needs to be torn down and rebuilt and that's what Jesus has done all right because of you know it needs to be it needs to be torn down because of what happened in the Garden of Eden right because of the knowledge of good and evil okay so I could go on and on about that it's it's pretty amazing really it's but it's also it's pretty simple you don't need an expert to teach you this all you need to do is believe the Bible that you hold in your hands 
all right so it's pretty incredible you know these guys teaching oh I mean you're essentially saying that Jesus didn't do anything at all and that Daniel 9 is talking about an Antichrist that takes away sins well if you if you call this person the the Antichrist you're saying that Jesus is the Antichrist that's what you're teaching man and you're you're so stupid you don't realize it and I mean if these guys were doing it on purpose they would be laughing at you because they they tricked you I and mean, the the devil is laughing at you for teaching that Jesus is the Antichrist it's stupid but again it's what Jesus told us would happen it's incredible all right, so that's it. I probably went on too long, but if you have any questions, comments, let's continue this conversation, man, because there's a whole lot more that I could have spoke of regarding these things. Okay, so to summarize, there is no seven-year tribulation. That's not in the Bible anywhere. There's no third third temple. There's no third temple being, that's taught anywhere in the Bible at all. It's not anywhere. All right, and oh, I was going to go over the Antichrist statement that he made. Right now, we are in that period of time. Daniel describes it as the fourth beast. All right, so we're in that. The beast of Revelation is the be the fourth beast of Daniel, which is the Antichrist. All right, it's the king and his kingdom. And as Daniel 17 teaches, there is a succession of kings. All right? It's not one person, it's not one kid who was born with a tattoo on his head. You're spending, you're getting your doctrine. These people are getting their doctrines from Hollywood movies. They are. They're not getting it from the Bible that they hold in their hands. And because it's because they don't believe the Bible they hold in their hands is from God. They ought to. You ought to, because it is. You believe God can resurrect you from the dead, but God can't give you a perfect Bible that you can hold in your hands? Come on. Now, what kind of God do you worship? Think about that. All right, so, again, no seven-year tribulation, no third temple. All right, and Jesus is the white horse. Jesus is the Christ. And um, again, uh, I didn't talk about this, but there is no thousand-year period coming after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And what people call the millennial reign of Christ. Jesus does not reign a thousand years. He reigns forever. And how can you rightly say that you're saved today if Jesus Christ is not reigning in your life so i'd like to i'd like to talk about that too but then i'll go on another 20 minutes let's end it right here okay if you have any questions you want to challenge me on anything let's go just be bold and what why not we're we're both after the truth so hit me hard with the truth if you think i got it wrong give it to me straight all right have a good day guys